Hi, I'm Doug McKinley, and you're watching Ad Armor TV. Now, for today's video, we're going to look at an area that I love to do, reflections. They're just fun. It's that simple. But even so, reflections can make some great pictures. I think we've all seen some of those great reflective pictures, especially off of water. Big vistas, giant mountains, glass-like lakes. But even so, smaller, more intimate pictures can be had. Like here in central London, there's no shortage of reflective surfaces for us to make some great pictures. First though, we have some technical things we have to think about. First up is aperture. Now f11 is my go-to aperture for any kind of reflective pictures. It helps to even out the shot. It creates this relation between the eye and the subject, thus enhancing the photographs. Next up is focus. Now a lot of the focus will depend on the distance between the subject and the reflection. First, try focusing on the subject and take an image. Next, try focusing on the reflection and take an image. This should produce slightly varied results. Now your preference will depend on how much attention you want to draw to the reflection. Finally, think of the angle of light and how that's going to affect your reflection. In a natural setting, outside, this probably means changing your point of view. Use what's around you. Benches, trees, anything up high, anything that's going to really enhance that reflection. This will only improve the picture. As I mentioned earlier, big vistas. I just want to briefly touch on this as we're in central London and the Rocky Mountains are a long ways away. However, if you do find yourself in those situations, there's a few things you're going to need to make your pictures work. First, a good tripod. You really need to steady that camera to get those great shots. Also, you're going to need some filters. A polarizing filter to cut some glare, and a couple of graduated neutral density filters to even out the light. But we're in central London, and what we're looking for are reflections and reflective surfaces. This can be anything from architecture, to windows, shops and cars, to puddles, fountains, or even tiles. It's a bit of a scavenger hunt, but like all good photography, the more you return to a place, the better your images become. Reflective photography, especially in an urban setting, tends to lean toward the abstract, and this is something you should embrace. So don't always look for those flat, clean surfaces, but search out the odd-shaped ones. And experiment with your aperture and your points of view. It's only by experimenting that you get a grip on this kind of photography and improve your pictures. Now I can see the photograph, it's just staring me in the face but I've got a lot of disembodied legs walking past it, so just waiting for them to clear and hopefully get myself a look. one or two seconds, if that, to get the picture. It actually looks very impressionistic, almost like, do I dare I say it, a little bit like a Van Gogh painting. <laughs> That's really cool. Actually, more Picasso, actually. Time of day plays a role here too. Mornings and afternoons are still the best times to shoot, but like all good photography, rules are meant to be broken. I've often found that shooting in midday, the reflections and puddles tend to stand out better, as does architectural pictures, especially with lots of modern glass buildings. And rainy days, what's well, a bit of a no-brainer, there are reflections everywhere. So that's our introduction to reflective photography. Thanks for joining us, I'm Doug McKinley for Adorama TV. Don't forget, you can subscribe to Adorama TV for more great videos. And do stop by the Adorama Learning Center for more great tips and tricks.